What's up guys, this is Aperture 115 and I'm here with voice actor extraordinaire, Eric Scott. Kimmerer, Kimmerer. yes. yes. <laughs> you got All it, right. you got it. Got him. All right, so my first question is, um, how many years have you been acting professionally? Uh, professionally, I'd say I've been acting for five years. I started doing voiceover in Seattle as uh, training just through different classes and workshops that would come through there. And that was when I was going through high school and college. After I graduated, I moved down here, which was about 2010, and had a bit of a working network and was able to kind of build momentum and start going from there. Awesome. Yeah. Um, can you describe your first experience working on Toradora? Oh, man. The there's a well. There's a couple of different first experiences I can I can talk about. I can talk about the audition, just my first experience realizing they were doing a dub. Uh, but if we're talking about first experience in the booth, I was a in nervous booth, yes. I was a nervous wreck. Honestly, mm. I had no idea what I was getting into. I had no idea why they chose me for that role. Mm. I, I auditioned for both Kitamura and Ryuji. Oh wow! So, yeah. So I thought out of my past characters, off of what I've been able to do before, I'm more likely to get Kitamura, right? The glasses right. character, the nerdy yeah. character, the... There's no way they're going to give me Ryuji. Well, <laughs> sure enough. I go in, um, the producers of Niz America are there, it's the director and the engineer in the booth with me, and again, nervous as all holy hell trying to... <laughs> trying to do justice to this character. This is uh, Toradora, this is huge. This is right. a show that has a fan base still going strong five years after it was released. Mm -hmm. So the fact they're even doing a dub now and that the fans are excited about it is, is a big deal. So I knew I had to do something, I had to do justice to it. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we were able to, do, to keep our pace with it, to mm -hmm. kind of pace it out and spend the first few hours, not just, okay, let's just go, let's just, start zero to 60, we were able to kind of key in the character, kind of tune the instrument and, and get an idea of what we were going to do going forward and give a lot of care and love to it. So it was, it was a nerve-wracking experience to start with, but it really, really eased me into it. They did a good job making me comfortable with the character to start out. And I, I believe Erica Harlicker said that you were a, a huge fan of Torador way before the show was even dubbed, is that right? I was a pretty big fan, yeah. Um, I... I was only kind of tangentially knowledgeable about it up until around the auditions, but as soon as I saw the auditions, I, I remember watching maybe six episodes on Crunchyroll a couple of years prior when it first came out, mm -hmm. and then when I got the auditions, I, uh, I'd never finished it not because I didn't like it, just because I got way too busy, so I thought, okay, you know what, it might be good to pick this up again. Mm -hmm. I plowed through it and had one of the most emotionally resonating uh, arcs of characters, of just romance right. that I have seen. It, I was going through my own stuff at the time with romance and it really affected me. It was yes. really powerful and really visceral. Yeah. So I yeah, had a huge love for it at that point. Yeah, definitely. Well, Torador is the reason why I actually go to conventions, why I do interviews with voice actors, why I have a huge love for vo um, like voice acting. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. That and Sword Art Online, actually. So, well, speaking of Sword Art Online, good. like, what was it like getting to pull out your character <laughs> opens the chest? Right? Nobody can keep a straight face whenever mentioning my character in Sword Art Online. Um, I, I, I had a blast with that. And it was the same director for Toradora. Alex uh, Von David. Alex Von right? David. Yeah. One of my favorite people to work with. The dude parked himself in the 80s and decided, I'm good here. He never left. Because he's always in the booth with like flannel jackets, talking about these punk bands he saw and these old grindhouse films that he collects. And mm -hmm. whenever I get a good take from him, it's not great or cool. It's rad. <laughs> it's like you are so '80s. But no, he. Uh, when I first got in there, my first line was uh, a, a cheer to Kirito or something. Like I got a toast to Kirito, and my voice cracked. <laughs> <laughs> Accidentally, I pushed too hard on the voice, and I was like, "Oh crap! Let me do it again." And Alex is like, "Nope, we're keeping it. That's it. We're gonna." <laughs> what? So yes, yeah, so that was my first experience with Alex. First experience with Sword Art Online, mm -hmm. and and I knew it was gonna be fun working with him then on. And it, the character was fun, you know. It's, it's a rogue character, rolls a critical miss on a trap check, and and causes a lot of PTSD. But you know, mm -hmm. it's it is what it is. 
Now, most recently, you you, you played Gother in Seven Deadly Sins. Yep. One of my favorite scenes is where you kind of just analyze uh, Elizabeth, kind of like a Terminator Three. It's like. <laughs> Based on your like current posture and your tone of voice, like, yeah, yeah, you have a crush on like Meliodas. Yeah. yeah, very Terminator Three, Patrick Bateman type of yeah. thing. Yes, yeah, so, no, I love. That's what resonates with with me with him and and Ryuji. I have such a, a dry, sarcastic sense of humor, and Gother's humor is bone dry. It is just. The driest of the dry, desert dry, California dry, I loved it. And just being able to do these kind of straight-faced jabs were... I, I had so much fun with them. What makes your job as a voice actor interesting compared to other careers? Oh man, uh, <laughs> the pace of it. The, the idea that in voiceover, and I, I repeat this often, is that if you're not moving, you're sinking. You have to keep a momentum going with it. So the difference with it is that there's so much uncertainty. Of course, it's a freelance job, so you're not the one who gets to make the choices about whether or not you're working. You're the choice that gets made. So all that uncertainty, where is my next paycheck coming from? Uh, it's, it's a difficult aspect of it, but it's, it's certainly an exhilarating aspect of voiceover, mm -hmm. I think. And it definitely separates it from a lot of other jobs, because I also work a 9 to 5. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not 9 to 5, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to do voiceover. I do a full-time job over the weekends, and it, it's... It pays the bills. It, <laughs> so pays the bills. it pays the bills. It's a means to an end, and it's not creatively fulfilling, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it's just something you do. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I would definitely love to be doing voiceover full time. Just a different character each day, a different adventure to go on. Just variety. Right. That's the best part of it, I think. All right. And um, can you improv a line that Ryuji Takasu would say and maybe even go through? Oh boy. Let's see here. Well, I'm here at AnimeCon and good lord, it's dirty out. Look at all this dirt here. I'm going to spend hours cleaning this with Ryuji Takasu's pride and patented cleaning techniques. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't think it's too dirty out here. I think it's a lovely day. I can just sit and read a book and... Oh dear, Ryuji, you really do have a lot of... a lot of hatred for your dad in your heart, don't you? Don't talk about my dad that way! <laughs> Awesome. So my last question. Just off, I have no idea where I was going with that, but <laughs> I'm very. Totally I'm not awesome. good with improv. I'm one of the few actors that will say I'm not good with improv. My mind is way too ADD to connect like two thoughts together and make them work. If, if somebody would 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 be able to make two thoughts work together and make it funny, my mind would think of a pink elephant. <laughs> That's just how ADD I am. Oh my goodness. So There's my no connection. Okay. So my last question is, uh, where, can fan, where can fans follow you on social media? Do you have a website? A uh, website is still under construction. I'm building it myself under Wix, but slow going. I'll try and get it out soon. But as far as, uh, as social media goes, I'm on Twitter as eKimmerer, and you can also find me on Instagram, but I hardly use that. Um, and I'm trying to remember my Facebook one. I believe it's Facebook slash Eric Scott Bo. And that will be my fan page. You can find that on. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Eric, thank you All so right. much for your time. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and also social media. You can catch me on streams. I'm doing video games now. That's right, Twitch. Twitch, yes, yes. yes. Every so, it's, it's nothing regular. I'm trying to, uh, to make a little bit more regularity of it. Regular. I speak words for a living. Can't you tell? <laughs> um, it's okay. I don't speak my own words. I, I get, I'm given the words I have to say. Uh, but no, King Chimera Vox. King Chimera V-O-X on Twitch, and hopefully I can get a more regular schedule on that, but mm -hmm. again, full-time job on top of a voiceover. Tuesdays and Thursdays, right? Yeah. I've been trying. I mean, it may have to regulate to just Wednesdays for now, but keep an eye on my Twitter and, and Facebook. I'm always going to post on there before I go live, so hop on Twitch, interact. I'm playing wrestling games and, and Life is Strange and all, all fun PS4 stuff. All right. Yes. Awesome. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you guys on the next Aperture 115 interview.